N, N dimethyltryptamine, DMT or N, NDMT, is a tryptamine molecule which occurs in many plants and animals. It can be consumed as a powerful psychedelic drug and has historically been prepared by various cultures for ritual purposes as an entheogen. Rick Strassman labeled it the spirit molecule. In most countries, DMT is illegal. DMT has a rapid onset, intense effects and a relatively short duration of action. For those reasons, DMT was known as the businessman's trip. During the 1960s in the United States, as a user could access the full depth of a psychedelic experience in considerably less time than with other substances such as LSD or magic mushrooms. DMT can be inhaled, injected, vaporized or ingested, and its effects depend on the dose. When inhaled or injected, the effects last a short period of time, about 5 to 15 minutes. Effects can last 3 hours or more when orally ingested along with an Maui, such as the ayahuasca brew of many native Amazonian tribes. DMT can produce vivid projections of mystical experiences involving euphoria and dynamic hallucinations of geometric forms. DMT is a structural analog of serotonin and melatonin and a functional analog of other psychedelic tryptamines such as 4-ACODMT, 5-MeO-DMT, 5-HODMT, psilocybin, 4-PODMT, and psilocin, 4-HODMT. Usage DMT is produced in many species of plants often in conjunction with its close chemical relatives 5-MeO-DMT and bufotenin 5-OH-DMT. DMT-containing plants are commonly used in South American shamanic practices. It is usually one of the main active constituents of the drink ayahuasca, however, ayahuasca is sometimes brewed with plants that do not produce DMT. It occurs as the primary psychoactive alkaloid in several plants including Mimosa tenuiflora, Diplotaris cabrerana, and Psychotria voridis. DMT is found as a minor alkaloid in snuff made from Varola bark resin in which 5-MeO-DMT is the main active alkaloid. DMT is also found as a minor alkaloid in bark, pods, and beans of Anadenanthera peregrina and Anadenanthera colubrina used to make Yopo and Vilka snuff in which Bufotenin is the main active alkaloid. Psilocin and its precursor psilocybin, an active chemical in many psychedelic mushrooms, are structurally similar to DMT. The psychotropic effects of DMT were first studied scientifically by the Hungarian chemist and psychologist Dr. Steven Zara, who performed research with volunteers in the mid-1950s. Zara, who later worked for the U.S. National Institutes of Health, had turned his attention to DMT after his order for LSD from the Swiss company Sandoz Laboratories was rejected on the grounds that the powerful psychotropic could be dangerous in the hands of a communist country. DMT is generally not active orally unless it is combined with a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, Maui, such as a reversible inhibitor of monoamine oxidase A, Rima, for example, Parmaline. Without an Maui, the body quickly metabolizes orally administered DMT, and it therefore has no hallucinogenic effect unless the dose exceeds monoamine oxidase's metabolic capacity. Other means of ingestion such as vaporizing, injecting, or insufflating the drug can produce powerful hallucinations for a short time, usually less than half an hour, as the DMT reaches the brain before it can be metabolized by the body. S. natural monoamine oxidase. Taking a Maui prior to vaporizing or injecting DMT prolongs and potentiates the effects. Effects Subjective psychedelic experiences Several scientific experimental studies have tried to measure subjective experiences of altered states of consciousness induced by drugs under highly controlled and safe conditions. In the 1990s, Rick Strassman and his colleagues conducted a five-year-long DMT study at the University of New Mexico. The results provided insight about the quality of subjective psychedelic experiences. In this study participants received the DMT dosage intravenously via injection and the findings suggested that different psychedelic experiences can occur, depending on the level of dosage. 
lower doses 0.01 and 0.05 mg per kilogram produced somesthetic and emotional responses, but not hallucinogenic experiences e.g., 0.05 mg per kilogram had mild mood elevating and calming properties. In contrast, higher doses 0.2 and 0.4 mg per kilogram researchers labeled as hallucinogenic that elicited intensely colored, rapidly moving display of visual images, formed, abstract or both. Comparing to other sensory modalities the most affected was visual domain. Participants reported visual hallucinations, less auditory hallucinations and specific physical sensation progressing to a sense of bodily dissociation, as well as experiences of euphoria, calm, fear, and anxiety. Strassman also stressed the importance of the context where the drug has been taken. He claimed that DMT has no beneficial effects of itself, rather the context when and where people take it plays an important role. It appears that DMT can produce a hallucinogenic experience. It can induce a state or feeling to a person that he or she is able to communicate with other intelligent life forms. C. Machine elves. High doses of DMT produce a hallucinatory state that involves sense of another intelligence that people sometimes describe as super-intelligent, but emotionally detached. In 1995 Adolf Dietrich and Daniel Lamparder did a study where they found that DMT-induced altered state of consciousness ASC, is strongly influenced by habitual, rather than situative factors. In the study researchers used three dimensions of the APZ questionnaire to describe ASC, rating scales of ASC. First, oceanic boundlessness o, refers to dissolution of ego boundaries mostly associated with positive emotions. Second, anxious ego dissolution AED, includes disorder of thoughts, loss of autonomy and self-control and third, visionary restructuralization VR, that includes auditory and visual illusions, hallucinations. Results showed strong effects within first and third dimensions for all conditions, especially DMT and suggested strong intrastability of elicited reactions independently of the condition for the OVE and VR scales. Importantly, the experiment was conducted in a safe laboratory environment. This particular setting had a certain influence on found results that might be very different outside the laboratory environment. Induced DMT experiences can include profound time dilation, visual and auditory illusions, and other experiences that, by most first-hand accounts, defy verbal or visual description. Some users report intense erotic imagery and sensations and utilize the drug in a ritual sexual context. Reported encounters with external entities Entities perceived during DMT inebriation have been represented in diverse forms of psychedelic art. The term machine elf was coined by ethnobotanist Terence McKenna for the entities he encountered in DMT. Hyperspace. Also using terms like fractal elves, or self-transforming machine elves. McKenna first encountered the machine elves after smoking DMT in Berkeley in 1965. His subsequent speculations regarding the hyperdimensional space in which they were encountered, has inspired a great many artists and musicians, and the meaning of DMT entities has been a subject of considerable debate among participants in a networked cultural underground, enthused by McKenna's effusive accounts of DMT hyperspace. Cliff Pickover has also written about the machine elf experience in the book Sex, Drugs, Einstein, and Elves, while Rick Strassman notes many similarities between self reports of his DMT study participants' encounters with these entities and mythological descriptions of figures such as Chayat Ha Kadesh in ancient religions. Strassman also argues for a similarity in his study participants' descriptions of mechanized wheels, gears and machinery in these encounters, with those described in visions of encounters with the living creatures and ophanim of the Hebrew Bible, noting they may stem from a common neuropsychopharmacological experience. Strassman argues that the external entities encountered in DMT experiences should be understood as analogous to certain forms of angels. Hallucinations of strange creatures had been reported by Zara in the Journal of Mental Science. Now 
now the British Journal of Psychiatry, 1958, Dimethyltryptamine Experiments with Psychotics, Stephen Zara described how one of his subjects under the influence of DMT had experienced strange creatures, dwarves or something, at the beginning of a DMT trip. Other researchers of the entities seemingly encountered by DMT users, described them as entities, or beings, in humanoid as well as animal form, with descriptions of little people being common, non-human gnomes, elves, imps, etc. This form of hallucination has been speculated to be the cause of alien abduction and extraterrestrial encounter experiences through endogenously occurring DMT. Psychology Today writes, one of the most remarkable features of the DMT experience is the frequency with which users encounter non-human intelligences, often resembling aliens. The external entities consistently encountered in DMT user self-reports, are described in university studies as overwhelmingly giving the impression of being, supremely powerful, wise and loving. However, their form is not consistent across experiences, and are reported in user experience as variously resembling extraterrestrial spirits or mystical gods, but also as clowns, elves and reptilian beings. Likening them to descriptions of rattling and chattering auditory phenomenon described in Angel Encounters with the Mythical Hayyuth in the Book of Ezekiel, Rick Strassman notes that participants in his studies, when reporting encounters with the alleged entities, often described loud auditory hallucinations, such as one subject reporting typically, the elves laughing or talking at high volume, chattering, twittering. Physical According to a dose-response study, dimethyltryptamine does slightly elevate blood pressure, heart rate, pupil diameter, and rectal temperature, in addition to elevating blood concentrations of beta-endorphin, corticotropin, cortisol, and prolactin. Growth hormone blood levels rise equally in response to all doses of DMT, and melatonin levels were unaffected. Dependence liability The dependence potential of DMT and the risk of sustained psychological disturbance are minimal when used for religious ceremonies. DMT, like most psychedelics, is considered to be neither addictive, nor toxic. Roots of administration Inhalation a standard dose for vaporized DMT is 20 to 40 mg. In general, this is inhaled in a few successive breaths. The effects last for a short period of time, usually 5 to 15 minutes, dependent on the dose. The onset after inhalation is very fast, less than 45 seconds, and peak effects are reached within a minute. In the 1960s, DMT was known as a businessman's trip. In the U.S. because of the relatively short duration and rapid onset of action when inhaled. DMT can be inhaled using an e-cigarette. Injection In a study conducted from 1990 through 1995, University of New Mexico psychiatrist Rick Strassman found that some volunteers injected with high doses of DMT reported experiences with perceived alien entities. Usually, the reported entities were experienced as the inhabitants of a perceived independent reality that the subjects reported visiting while under the influence of DMT. In a September 2009 interview, Strassman described the effects on participants in the study. He stated that, Subjectively, the most interesting results were that high doses of DMT seemed to allow the consciousness of our volunteers to enter into non-corporeal, freestanding, independent realms of existence inhabited by beings of light who oftentimes were expecting the volunteers, and with whom the volunteers interacted. While typical, near-death and mystical states occurred, they were relatively rare. Oral ingestion. DMT is broken down by the enzyme monoamine oxidase through a process called deamination, and is quickly inactivated orally unless combined with a monoamine oxidase inhibitor Maui. The traditional South American beverage ayahuasca, or yage, is derived by boiling the ayahuasca vine capi, with leaves of one or more plants containing DMT, such as Psychotria voridis, Psychotria carthagenensis, or Diplotaris cabrerana. 
The ayahuasca vine contains harmala alkaloids, highly active reversible inhibitors of monoamine oxidase A remas, rendering the DMT orally active by protecting it from deamination. A variety of different recipes are used to make the brew depending on the purpose of the ayahuasca session, or local availability of ingredients. Two common sources of DMT in the western U.S. are reed canary grass Phalaris arundinacea, and harding grass Phalaris aquatica. These invasive grasses contain low levels of DMT and other alkaloids but also contain gramine, which is toxic and difficult to separate. In addition, Jerima mimosa tenuiflora, shows evidence of DMT content. The pink layer in the inner root bark of this small tree contains a high concentration of N, NDMT. Taken orally with an rima, DMT produces a long-lasting, over three-hour, slow, deep metaphysical experience similar to that of psilocybin mushrooms, but more intense. Remas should be used with caution as they can have fatal interactions with some prescription drugs such as SSRI antidepressants, and some over-the-counter drugs known as sympathomimetics such as ephedrine or certain cough medicines and even some herbal remedies. History DMT was first synthesized in 1931 by chemist Richard Helmuth Frederick Mangsky, born 1901 in Berlin, Germany 1977. In general, its discovery as a natural product is credited to Brazilian chemist and microbiologist Oswaldo Goncalves de Lima 1908 who, in 1946, isolated an alkaloid he named nigerina nigerine, from the root bark of Jerima preta, that is, mimosa tenuiflora. However, in a careful review of the case Jonathan Ott shows that the empirical formula for nigerine determined by Goncalves de Lima, which notably contains an atom of oxygen, can match only a partial, impure, or contaminated, form of DMT. It was only in 1959, when Goncalves de Lima provided American chemists a sample of mimosa tenuiflora roots, that DMT was unequivocally identified in this plant material. Less ambiguous is the case of isolation and formal identification of DMT in 1955 in seeds and pods of Anadinanthera peregrina by a team of American chemists led by Evan Horning 1916 since 1955, DMT has been found in a host of organisms, in at least 50 plant species belonging to 10 families, and in at least 4 animal species, including 1 Gorgonian and 3 mammalian species. Another historical milestone is the discovery of DMT in plants frequently used by Amazonian natives as additive to the vine Banisteriopsis capi to make ayahuasca decoctions. In 1957, American chemists Francis Hochstein and Anita Paradis identified DMT in an aqueous extract of leaves of a plant they named Prestonia amazonicum sick, and described as commonly mixed with B. capi. The lack of a proper botanical identification of Prestonia amazonica in this study led American ethnobotanist Richard Evans Schultz (1915–2001) and other scientists to raise serious doubts about the claimed plant identity. The mistake likely led William Burroughs to regard the DMT he experimented with in Tangier in 1961 as Prestonia. Better evidence was produced in 1965 by French pharmacologist Jacques Poisson, who isolated DMT as a sole alkaloid from leaves, provided and used by Aguaruna Indians, identified as having come from the vine Diplotaris cabrerana, then known as Banisteriopsis rusviana. Published in 1970, the first identification of DMT in the plant Psychotria voridis, another common additive of ayahuasca, was made by a team of American researchers led by pharmacologist Era Dermartorosian. Not only did they detect DMT in leaves of P. boridus obtained from Kashinawa indigenous people, but they also were the first to identify it in a sample of an ayahuasca decoction, prepared by the same indigenous people. In the 1990s, ethnobotanist and speaker Terence McKenna significantly helped popularize DMT across North America, Europe, Australia and elsewhere. Legal status International law DMT is classified as a Schedule I drug under the United Nations 1971 Convention on Psychotropic Substances, meaning that international trade in DMT is supposed to be closely monitored, use of DMT is supposed to be restricted to scientific research and medical use. 
Natural materials containing DMT, including ayahuasca, are not regulated under the 1971 Psychotropic Convention. By country and continent Asia Israel, DMT is an illegal substance, production, trade and possession are prosecuted as crimes. Europe France, DMT, along with most of its plant sources, is classified as a stupefiant, narcotic. Germany, DMT is prohibited as a class 1 drug. Netherlands, the drug is banned as it is classified as a list 1 drug per the opium law. Production, trade and possession of DMT are prohibited. Russia, classified as a schedule 1 narcotic. United Kingdom, DMT is classified as a Class A drug. North America Canada, DMT is classified as a Schedule III drug under the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act. United States DMT is classified in the United States as a Schedule I drug under the Controlled Substances Act of 1970. In December 2004, the Supreme Court lifted a stay, thereby allowing the Brazil based Uniao do Vegetal UDV Church to use a decoction containing DMT in their Christmas services that year. This decoction is a tea made from boiled leaves and vines, known as hoasca within the UDV, and ayahuasca in different cultures. In Gonzalez v. O Centro Espírita Beneficent Uniao do Vegetal, the Supreme Court heard arguments on November 1, 2005, and unanimously ruled in February 2006 that the U.S. federal government must allow the UDV to import and consume the tea for religious ceremonies under the 1993 Religious Freedom Restoration Act. In September 2008, the three Santo Dame churches filed suit in federal court to gain legal status to import DMT containing ayahuasca tea. The case, Church of the Holy Light of the Queen v. Mukisi, presided over by Judge Owen M. Panner, was ruled in favor of the Santo Dame Church. As of March 21, 2009, a federal judge says members of the church in Ashland can import, distribute and brew ayahuasca. U.S. District Judge Owen Panner issued a permanent injunction barring the government from prohibiting or penalizing the sacramental use of Dame T. Panner's order said activities of the Church of the Holy Light of the Queen are legal and protected under freedom of religion. His order prohibits the federal government from interfering with and prosecuting church members who follow a list of regulations set out in his order. Oceania New Zealand, DMT is classified as a Class A drug under the Misuse of Drugs Act 1975. Australia DMT is listed as a Schedule IX prohibited substance in Australia under the Poison Standard, October 2015. A Schedule IX drug is outlined in the Poisons Act 1964 as substances which may be abused or misused, the manufacture, possession, sale or use of which should be prohibited by law except when required for medical or scientific research, or for analytical, teaching or training purposes with approval of the CEO." Under the Misuse of Drugs Act 1981 6.0 grams of DMT is considered enough to determine a court of trial and 2.0 grams is considered intent to sell and supply. Between 2011 and 2012, the Australian federal government was considering changes to the Australian Criminal Code that would classify any plants containing any amount of DMT as controlled plants. DMT itself was already controlled under current laws. The proposed changes included other similar blanket bans for other substances, such as a ban on any and all plants containing mescaline or ephedrine. The proposal was not pursued after political embarrassment on realization that this would make the official floral emblem of Australia, Acacia pycnantha, golden wattle, illegal. The Therapeutic Goods Administration and Federal Authority had considered a motion to ban the same, but this was withdrawn in May 2012, as DMT may still hold potential entheogenic value to native and or religious people. Chemistry The DMT molecule contains a terminal secondary amine, which acts as a weak base with a pKa of approximately 10.5. 
Depending on the synthetic route, or extraction procedure, it is possible to isolate the free base or various salts obtained by protonation of the secondary amine. Common salts insluce the sulfate, the hydrochloride, the fumarate, the oxalate and the picrate. The free base and each salt has its own properties including CAS number, stability, solubility, and melting point. Each salt will also have a different molecular weight, thus also changing the exact dosage as measured in weight. Biosynthesis Dimethyltryptamine is an indole alkaloid derived from the shikimate pathway. Its biosynthesis is relatively simple and summarized in the adjacent picture. In plants, the parent amino acid L-tryptophan is produced endogenously where in animals L-tryptophan is an essential amino acid coming from diet. No matter the source of L-tryptophan, the biosynthesis begins with its decarboxylation by an aromatic amino acid decarboxylase AADC enzyme, step 1. The resulting decarboxylated tryptophan analog is tryptamine. Tryptamine then undergoes a transmethylation, step 2. The enzyme indolethylamine N-methyltransferase INMT, catalyzes the transfer of a methyl group from cofactor s adenosylmethionine SAM, via nucleophilic attack, to tryptamine. This reaction transforms SAM into s adenosylhomocysteine SAH, and gives the intermediate product N-methyltryptamine NMT. NMT is in turn transmethylated by the same process step 3, to form the end product N, N-dimethyltryptamine. Tryptamine transmethylation is regulated by two products of the reaction, SAH, and DMT were shown ex vivo to be among the most potent inhibitors of rabbit INMT activity. This transmethylation mechanism has been repeatedly and consistently proven by radiolabeling of SAM methyl group with carbon-14, 14CCH3, SAM. Laboratory synthesis DMT can be synthesized through several possible pathways from different starting materials. Following Shulgin's notes, the first synthesis starts with tryptamine followed by trimethylation using methyl iodide to obtain the trimethylammonium iodide salt. This is then demethylated using Li 3 bh to obtain DMT. The iodide salt of the trimethylammonium intermediate can be converted to the chloride salt followed by a different demethylation procedure. The second procedure avoids the overmethylation of the amine and uses ethyl formate reacted with tryptamine for a double end formulation. These are then reduced using lithium aluminum hydride to obtain the, the dimethylamine product. The third synthesis starts from indole and oxalyl chloride which forms indole 3 -il glyoxyl chloride. This is then reacted with dimethylamine followed by reduction using lithium aluminum hydride to obtain DMT. Depending on the final workup the free base or any of its various salts may be obtained as products. Shulgin gives a procedure for obtaining the hydrochloride salt by dissolving DMT in diethyl ether followed by sparging with HCl gas. He also mentions the picrate, oxalate and fumarate salts. Clandestine manufacture In a clandestine setting, DMT is not typically synthesized due to the lack of availability of the starting materials, namely tryptamine and oxalyl chloride. It is more often extracted from plant sources using a hydrocarbon solvent such as hexane due to the ease of ability of both the plant source and solvents, neither of which are controlled in most countries. Evidence in mammals Published in Science in 1961, Julius Axelrod found an N-methyltransferase enzyme capable of mediating biotransformation of tryptamine into DMT in a rabbit's lung. This finding initiated a still ongoing scientific interest in endogenous DMT production in humans and other mammals. From then on, two major complementary lines of evidence have been investigated, localization and further characterization of the N-methyltransferase enzyme, and analytical studies looking for endogenously produced DMT in body fluids and tissues. In 2013 researchers first reported DMT in the pineal gland microdialysate of rodents. A study published in 2014 reported the biosynthesis of N, N-dimethyltryptamine, DMT, in the human melanoma cell line SKMEL 147 in including details on its metabolism by peroxidases. In a 2014 paper a group first demonstrated the immunomodulatory potential of DMT and 5-MeO-DMT through the sigma-1 receptor of human immune cells. 
This immunomodulatory activity may contribute to significant anti-inflammatory effects and tissue regeneration. Endogenous DMT the first claimed detection of mammalian endogenous DMT was published in June 1965. German researchers F. Franzen and H. Gross report to have evidenced and quantified DMT, along with its structural analog bufotenin 5 -HO -DMT, in human blood and urine. In an article published four months later, the method used in their study was strongly criticized, and the credibility of their results challenged. Few of the analytical methods used prior to 2001 to measure levels of endogenously formed DMT had enough sensitivity and selectivity to produce reliable results. Gas chromatography, preferably coupled to mass spectrometry, GCMS, is considered a minimum requirement. A study published in 2005 implements the most sensitive and selective method ever used to measure endogenous DMT, liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry with electrospray ionization LCESI mega -siemens per mega -siemens, allows for reaching limits of detection, LODs 12 to 200 fold lower than those attained by the best methods employed in the 1970s. The data summarized in the table below are from studies conforming to the above-mentioned requirements abbreviations used, CSF. Cerebrospinal fluid, LOD Limit of detection, N Number of samples, nanogram per liter and nanogram per kilogram Nanograms 10 minus 9 grams per liter and nanograms per kilogram respectively A 2013 study found DMT in microdialysate obtained from a rat's pineal gland providing evidence of endogenous DMT in the mammalian brain Detection in body fluids DMT may be measured in blood, plasma or urine using chromatographic techniques as a diagnostic tool in clinical poisoning situations or to aid in the medical legal investigation of suspicious deaths. In general, blood or plasma DMT levels in recreational users of the drug are in the 10 to 30 micrograms per liter range during the first several hours post-ingestion. Less than 0.1% of an oral dose is eliminated unchanged in the 24-hour urine of humans. INMT Before techniques of molecular biology were used to localize indolethylamine N-methyltransferase INMT, characterization and localization went on a par, samples of the biological material where INMT is hypothesized to be active are subject to enzyme assay. Those enzyme assays are performed either with a radio-labeled methyl donor like 14-CCH3 SAM to which known amounts of in-labeled substrates like tryptamine are added or with addition of a radio-labeled substrate like 14-C NMT to demonstrate in vivo formation. As qualitative determination of the radioactively tagged product of the enzymatic reaction is sufficient to characterize INMT existence and activity, or lack of, analytical methods used in INMT assays are not required to be as sensitive as those needed to directly detect and quantify the minute amounts of endogenously formed DMT, see DMT subsection below. The essentially qualitative method thin layer chromatography, TLC, was thus used in a vast majority of studies. Also, robust evidence that INMT can catalyze transmethylation of tryptamine into NMT and DMT could be provided with reverse isotope dilution analysis coupled to mass spectrometry for rabbit and human lung during the early 1970s. Selectivity rather than sensitivity proved to be an Achilles heel for some TLC methods with the discovery in 1974-1975 that incubating rat blood cells or brain tissue with 14-CCH3 SAM and NMT as substrate mostly yields tetrahydro-beta-carboline derivatives, and negligible amounts of DMT in brain tissue. It is indeed simultaneously realized that the TLC methods used thus far in almost all published studies on INMT and DMT biosynthesis are incapable to resolve DMT from those tetrahydro-beta-carbolines. 
These findings are a blow for all previous claims of evidence of INMT activity and DMT biosynthesis in avian and mammalian brain, including in vivo, as they all relied upon use of the problematic TLC methods. Their validity is doubted in replication studies that make use of improved TLC methods, and fail to evidence DMT producing INMT activity in rat and human brain tissues. Published in 1978, the last study attempting to evidence in vivo INMT activity and DMT production in brain rat, with TLC methods finds biotransformation of radiolabeled tryptamine into DMT to be real but insignificant. Capability of the method used in this latter study to resolve DMT from tetrahydro-beta carbolines is questioned later. To localize INMT, a qualitative leap is accomplished with use of modern techniques of molecular biology, and of immunohistochemistry. In humans, a gene encoding INMT is determined to be located on chromosome 7. Northern blot analyses reveal INMT messenger RNA mRNA, to be highly expressed in rabbit lung, and in human thyroid, adrenal gland, and lung. Intermediate levels of expression are found in human heart, skeletal muscle, trachea, stomach, small intestine, pancreas, testis, prostate, placenta, lymph node, and spinal cord. Low to very low levels of expression are noted in rabbit brain, and human thymus, liver, spleen, kidney, colon, ovary, and bone marrow. INMT mRNA expression is absent in human peripheral blood leukocytes, whole brain, and in tissue from seven specific brain regions thalamus, subthalamic nucleus, caudate nucleus, hippocampus, amygdala, substantia nigra, and corpus callosum. Immunohistochemistry showed INMT to be present in large amounts in glandular epithelial cells of small and large intestines. In 2011, immunohistochemistry revealed the presence of INMT in primate nervous tissue including retina, spinal cord motor neurons, and pineal gland. Conjecture In the 1950s, the endogenous production of psychoactive agents was considered to be a potential explanation for the hallucinatory symptoms of some psychiatric diseases, this is known as the transmethylation hypothesis. Several speculative and yet untested hypotheses suggest that endogenous DMT is produced in the human brain and is involved in certain psychological and neurological states. DMT is naturally occurring in small amounts in rat brain, human cerebrospinal fluid, and other tissues of humans and other mammals. A biochemical mechanism for this was proposed by the medical researcher J.C. Calloway, who suggested in 1988 that DMT might be connected with visual dream phenomena, brain DMT levels would be periodically elevated to induce visual dreaming and possibly other natural states of mind. A role of endogenous hallucinogens including DMT in higher level sensory processing and awareness was proposed by J. V. Wallach 2009, based on a hypothetical role of DMT as a neurotransmitter. In 2011, Nicholas V. Coetzee, of the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health, concluded that INMT, an enzyme that may be associated with the biosynthesis of DMT and endogenous hallucinogens, is present in the primate, rhesus macaque, pineal gland, retinal ganglion neurons, and spinal cord. Neurobiologist Andrew Gallimore 2013, suggested that while DMT might not have a modern neural function, it may have been an ancestral neuromodulator once secreted in psychedelic concentrations during REM sleep, a function now lost. Pharmacology Pharmacokinetics DMT peak level concentrations C-max, measured in whole blood after intramuscular IM, injection 0.7 mg per kilogram and 11 and in plasma following intravenous IV, administration 0.4 mg per kilogram and 10 of fully psychedelic doses are in the range of approximately equals 14 to 154 micrograms per liter and 32 to 204 micrograms per liter, respectively. The corresponding molar concentrations of DMT are therefore in the range of 0.074 to 0.818 micro m in whole blood and 0.170 to 1.08 micro m in plasma. However, several studies have described active transport and accumulation of DMT into rat and dog brain following peripheral administration. Similar active transport and accumulation processes likely occur in human brain and may concentrate DMT in brain by several fold or more relatively to blood, resulting in local concentrations in the micromolar or higher range. 
Such concentrations would be commensurate with serotonin brain tissue concentrations, which have been consistently determined to be in the 1.5 to 4 μm range, closely coextending with peak psychedelic effects. Mean time to reach peak concentrations Tmax, was determined to be 10 to 15 minutes in whole blood after IM injection, and 2 minutes in plasma after IV administration. When taken orally mixed in an ayahuasca decoction, and in freeze-dried ayahuasca gel caps, DMT Tmax is considerably delayed, 107.59 plus or minus 32.5 minutes, and 90 to 120 minutes, respectively. The pharmacokinetics for vaporizing DMT have not been studied or reported. Pharmacodynamics DMT binds non-selectively with affinities. 70 μm and VMAT2 mediated serotonin uptake in vesicles of army worm SF9 cells expressing rat VMAT2 at an average concentration of 93 plus or minus 6.8 μm, as with other so-called classical hallucinogens. A large part of DMT psychedelic effects can be attributed to a functionally selective activation of the 5-HT2A receptor. DMT concentrations eliciting 50% of its maximal effect, half maximal effective concentration equals EC50 or CACT, at the human 5-HT2A receptor in vitro or in the 0.118 to 0.983 μm range. This range of values coincides well with the range of concentrations measured in blood and plasma after administration of a fully psychedelic dose see pharmacokinetics. As DMT has been shown to have slightly better efficacy EC50 at human serotonin 2C receptor than at the 2A receptor, 5-HT2C is also likely implicated in DMT's overall effects. Other receptors, such as 5-HT1A sigma-1, may also play a role. In 2009, it was hypothesized that DMT may be an endogenous ligand for the sigma-1 receptor. The concentration of DMT needed for sigma-1 activation in vitro 50 to 100 μm, is similar to the behaviorally active concentration measured in mouse brain of approximately 106 μm. This is minimally four orders of magnitude higher than the average concentrations measured in rat brain tissue or human plasma under basal conditions see endogenous DMT, so sigma-1 receptors are likely to be activated only under conditions of high local DMT concentrations. If DMT is stored in synaptic vesicles, such concentrations might occur during vesicular release. To illustrate, while the average concentration of serotonin in brain tissue is in the 1.5 to 4 μm range, the concentration of serotonin in synaptic vesicles was measured at 270 m. Following vesicular release, the resulting concentration of serotonin in the synaptic cleft, to which serotonin receptors are exposed, is estimated to be about 300 μm. Thus, while in vitro receptor binding affinities, efficacies, and average concentrations in tissue or plasma are useful, they are not likely to predict DMT concentrations in the vesicles or at synaptic or intracellular receptors. Under these conditions, notions of receptor selectivity are moot, and it seems probable that most of the receptors identified as targets for DMT see above, participate in producing its psychedelic effects. See also DMT and oxide List of psychoactive plants Neurotransmitter Jonathan Ott Psychedelic drug Serotonergic psychedelic Alexander Shulgin Rick Strassman References External links DMT chapter from Tikal